The Warriors are coached by Corey Morrell, who is assisted by Jennifer Lindau. At this time, we ask that you will please stand and remove all hats for prayer and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another day on this earth. We ask that you would keep all of these competitors safe and that everything done here would be for your glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Singing today's national anthem are women's soccer's own Katie Cook. Kill it, Katie, as always. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the say does that star spangled banner o'er the land of the free and the home of the Did we really have it muted? For the lineup being called, yeah. Uh, cause, uh, Rachel's mom just texted me and was like, yo. That's who's, that's who it is. Yeah. She was like, is that him? We're muted now, aren't we? No, we're not. She, she said I knew it, my girl. Y'all ever go back and listen to y'all? It's not as bad now, it's a little soft. Should we just get something over? Hey, for my headset, can you turn me down a little? Cause it's like, super warm.
Good afternoon, Warrior Nation, and thank you for tuning in to another broadcast here on the SWU Sports Network. My name is Harley Staten. Today I am joined by former women's soccer goalie Anna Marie Garreter, as we <coughs> like to call her, AM. AM, thanks for being on the broadcast with me today. No problem. I actually love uh, the side of it. You get to see a lot more than just being on the field, so I'm grateful for the opportunity that I'm getting this season to come up here and give another perspective for everybody watching. Absolutely. It's it's fun to go from being an athlete to up here and then also uh, being a coach myself at some point, seeing athletics from that different level. It's really cool to see all the different things. But uh, jumping right in, game already underway. Let's look at the starting 11 for both your Warriors and the Erskine Flying Fleet Conference Carolinas matchup here on this Wednesday afternoon. In goal for the Flying Fleet, number 22, Sarah Dooley. They also have Marissa Miltko, Alexa Barrios, Gabby Valdez, Jillian Coves, Vivian Gonzalez, Jane Ashley Meredith, Devin Cobrell, Alston Coleman, Brittany Gardner, and Eliza Denmead. And then when we go over to the Warriors side, in goal, sophomore Jen Golio, followed by junior Ashley Romanowski, Freshman Ashton Irby, sophomore Ali Kissel, senior Helen Schweiger, sophomore Emily Corrier, senior Mio Owens, senior Sarah Baldwin, junior Rachel Curtis, sophomore Mallory Butler, and freshman Joy Namist. Warriors come into this contest 2-2 two and two record overall. Last time they took the field was last Saturday. That was against the Lees McRae Bobcats where they won 4-3 to three in overtime. Warriors have started this season four consecutive overtime games. We'll see if they make it five today, but hopefully the Warriors will just pull this one out in regulation AM. Hopefully, because um, I'm good friends with some of the girls still on the team, all the returners, and I've heard some talk about they're sick and tired of going into overtime. That adds a lot of extra minutes on a season that's already long enough, so I'm sure the Warriors would love to be able to finish this one in 90. Uh, and come away, and if they're able to be victorious today, they would be 2-0 and in Conference Carolinas. That would tie them for first place with Limestone and North Greenville. Little back and forth action to start this contest. Warriors currently 1-1 one one here at Childs Field. First time was a couple Wednesdays ago against Georgia Southwestern where they lost 3-2 to two in overtime. I remember that game, Georgia Southwestern scoring the game-winning goal in the second overtime with less than a minute left to go on the clock. And then, like we said, their second home game was against Lees McRae where they won 4-3. to three. <coughs> Right away, you can see uh, Erskine's using both sides of the field, testing the waters on SWU to see uh, which one they are a little bit weaker on. But right now, Swoos is holding out, so it's going to be a good game. Right away, we got, uh, who was that, number 18 on Erskine coming in, testing that back line. See, today we got not our usual back line. Coach Morris wanting to switch it up a little bit. So... We'll see how this works out. Uh, all of the defenders that I know of on the field work hard. And one good thing about the Warriors is all of their defenders are really interchangeable. And not many teams can have that where they'll come off the bench and be able to fit and mesh like most teams only have like certain people that can normally play in one spot. So it's a really strength that we have this year. We were talking about the back line there, and I know a lot of people, when it comes to soccer, you know the big-name players, and it's the ones that score all the time. What makes a back line defender stand out amongst other soccer players? That has them, you know, recognition amongst soccer players, but maybe not recognition amongst people who are watching the game at home. Really a standout defender from a goalie's perspective is the ones that will come in and shield the ball, make that extra step, make that extra <coughs> block that will come in, maybe not – you wouldn't think it'd be big right then and there, but in the long run, it plays out for you. Okay. Are Some of the big ones this season and in past seasons have been number 10, Mio. She's held that back line spot really good. Mallory's number 18. She's good. We see number four, Ashton Irby. She's a freshman coming in this year, and she's been stepping up really well. 
Also, captain, number 23, Amber Goss. She's really strong on that right side when she plays. And then we have Emily Corrier back there. So each of them brings their own strengths and, and, I mean, their weaknesses, but they all play off of each other. So there's really not that weak link in that back line this year. Chance here for Ashley Romanowski. Passing it over to Curtis. Takes the shot, but that Ooh. is blocked by the goalie, Sarah Dooley. It was a good little teamwork right there, that one-two between Ash and Ray. Just next time, she's got it. So a, an excellent stop by Sarah Dooley for the Flying Fleet. Warriors had a great opportunity to go up one to nothing there. Dooley will reset the ball, kick it out to midfield. Fun fact by Erskine's goalie, uh, Sarah Dooley, I actually went to high school with her. She's a pretty solid keeper. So. Where did you guys go to high school? Like? Uh, Pickens High School over in Pickens, South Carolina. So right up the road. Just right up the road, bit. about 45 minutes. So. It'll be a good challenge for the forwards, but I know they'll just keep pounding. Chance for the Flying Fleet there. Player down, Irby able to recover. Knocks the ball back out for the Warriors. Trying to get another possession. Swiger is there. Long pass, looking for Romanowski. Dooley's coming all the way out from the goal, almost to the midfield circle. Able to deflect that one away. So now Erskine back on the Warriors' side of the field. Good defense there by Owens. Pass inside, chance for the Flying Fleet shot taken. Golio able to deflect that one. That deflection was the only reason that shot did not go in. Able to sneak yeah. in just behind the Warriors' back line there, but luckily for the Warriors, Golio was able to get a hand on that one. From here, it looked like she had a maybe a little half extension, got some fingers on it, so worked out really well for her. Corner kick coming in for the Flying Fleet. I believe that's number 18, Cameron Bailey. Or is that, that's number 12 actually, Bradley Anderson. Curtis able to knock the ball out. Flea trying to get it back. Good Curtis deflection. Able to give it all the way up to Romanowski, but now it's a little chase down. The ball goes out of bounds. They're actually going to say that was last touch by the Flying Fleet. Warriors with a throw in deep in Flying Fleet territory. Erskine using that left side of the field. Looking to bring it to the middle. Header there by Irby, able to knock it back towards midfield. Erskine still able to maintain possession, but number five, Ali Kiesel. Kissel, excuse me, Kissel. Good takeaway there by Courier. Erskine trying to move inside, get an attack going. Courier has it now on their side of the field. Gets it to Romanowski. Back to Kissel near midfield. Irby, long pass over to Baldwin. Looking for Curtis, gets over her head, deflected off of the Flying Fleet. Little bit of contact there with Schweiger and the Flying Fleet. Chance here for Baldwin. Will she get a shot off? Pushes it oh. in. Good deflection there by the Flying Fleet. As earlier you asked, what would be a standout moment for a back line and uh, Erskine? That, that Erskine was one right there. It's right there. Be able to come in and step out. 
as a goalie, you need to be able to trust your that back line to step in. That ball was so close to going just over because – let me ask you this. The ball doesn't have to necessarily go into the net. As long as it goes past the white line, it's a goal, right? Correct. So, I mean, that ball was so close before it's able to be deflected by number 12. That's Bradley. So set up a uh, swoo corner. Knocked away by the defender. Chance here for the Warriors, still with possession pass inside. That's going to be picked up by Dooley. So now we've seen the Warriors with two crazy good possessions. And AM, even though they don't score on those, I'd like to think that those build a lot of confidence for the team knowing they're able to get that close and get those good of shots this early on in the game. Oh, yes, sir. It brings a lot of confidence because the team really uses that, uses that energy to just come back and know, hey, maybe not this time, but we're coming back next time even harder. See a good little battle right there between number 12, Richard Curtis, and Erskine's player. <laughs> Golio will set this one up, kick it away. Just under 32 minutes left to go here in the first half from Child's Field. Still 0 to 0 at the moment. Warriors have gotten two very good shots on goals early on. Erskine has gotten one that was deflected by Golio, kept from going in. Chase down by Romanowski. She's able to get possession of it. Her and Curtis are there. Ashley's going to take the shot, and it's going to land right in the chest of Sarah Dooley. Surprised Romanowski took that shot. I'm not sure if she saw Curtis to her left. Curtis was wide open on that. Would have been a good chance for a pass, maybe a shot taken, but I thought Romanowski had a good look on it, so I don't blame her for taking the shot. Agreed. And initially that play was set up by a uh, freshman, Joy, I Chance believe. Chance here for the fleet. Ball doesn't go out of bounds. Golio gets a hand Abel. on it. There's a little tussle down in the box. That's going to go out of bounds. We'll see who that was last touched by. They're going to say it was the flying fleet. So Warriors will be able to kick it away. Golio with two goal-saving stops here early on. Being able to match up with Sarah Dooley block for block so far. AM, having been a goalie yourself and knowing you have to kick it away to your team, What's the ideal kick that a person on offense would want to receive? Is it ones like Golios that are kind of low and quick, or do they want something that's more high and gets more distance on it? What's kind of the run through of that process? Really, it just depends on the goalie. Some goalies have the ability to be able to punt it up high. Some are more direct, but in training, we work on both the high punts to give it time to get in position and also the low direct punts. And also in goal kicks, you kind of just want to get it there. Um, on offense, they just like placement. <laughs> Usually uh, you shoot for either the right or the left side. You never really want to get it in the middle because mm -hmm. it's just an open shot for both teams. 
So Coach Jen is uh, the goalie coach for uh, SWU, and she really drills, and she's really good about placement and, and punts and stuff like that. So I know for a fact that uh, goalie, goalie-o, <laughs> it's really <laughs> ironic to say there, but goalie-o does like to place it all in all three locations. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed our goalkeeper's play has definitely improved after Coach Jennifer Lindau has come on to help this team. I remember last year Courtney McNeil's play improved the longer she was there. She started for, what, three seasons at goalie? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, she came in as a freshman and played a couple games but really kind of took over her sophomore year. And She came in as one player, but she left totally better player and it was all according to her hard work and coach Jen so and her senior year was her best year I think she recorded I believe five shutouts her senior year I if, believe so if not more so a shot was taken by the fleet Golio was able to catch that in the air Erskine with another possession number 14 for the flying fleet Good defense by the Warriors, able to push it back. Curtis comes in, trying to kick the ball back to midfield, goes out of bounds. It's a good hustle play by Curtis right there. As a forward, it's, it's really hard sometimes because sometimes you have to shift from one side of the field all the way over, and it's just you just got to build up that stamina, and I believe that our forwards are really good at that. So credit to her right there on that one. Bad pass causes a loose ball. Golio is going to come over and scoop it up. We'll see her kick this one away. Namist is there. First one to touch it. Ball gets away from her. Flying Fleet have it. So far it seems their success has come from going to the middle and then working their way outside. They've had one shot on goal from the dead middle of the field and two from the right side. Another long shot here. Golio had all day to get right in front of that one and catch that with ease. Oh. Curtis takes that one off of the face, it looked like, after deflecting off of the Flying Fleet player. Here comes Erskine trying to get into the middle. Chance for a shot here. Ooh. That's going to get in. Golio with the dive, unable to stop it. That's going to be number 18, Jane Ashley Meredith, giving the first goal of the game and putting the Flying Fleet on top, one to nothing. Right, that, now that goal is just fresh on Swoo's mind, but they just got to keep playing like a 0-0. Zero, zero. They can't let this get to them. Flying Fleet trying to go across the middle again. This time nobody was there. Golio, first one to touch it. Last time that play worked, was able to get it just past the back line of the Warriors. One-on-one -on -one with uh, number 18 and the Warrior defender able to get the shot in. Looks like that call will be on contact from behind. We had uh, number 21, Joy, come in. A little too hard on that one. So free kick coming up here for the fleet. Taking it right into the box. Luckily, Golio able to pick it up on the one hop. Golio rolls this one to Baldwin here on the near side. She's going to take it across midfield, trying to pass it down to Curtis. Curtis won't be able to get there. That ball is going to keep rolling. Looks like it does get all the way out of bounds. So 
Some substitutions coming in for the Warrior. Chelsea Green coming in for Allie Kissel. And looks like we'll have number 33, that is Madison Woolbert, coming in for Joy Namus. Green is a senior from the Cayman Islands, and Woolbert is a freshman from Huntington Beach, California. Fun fact, Woolbert's got a twin on the team. It's got to be pretty cool to be able to come all the way from California and be able to say you do it with your sister, so... Yeah, her sister Peyton Wolbert, another freshman on the team. Twins, there's very few distinctions to be able to tell them apart. Every now and then one will wear makeup and one won't, and that's just about the only way I've been able to tell anything. <laughs> yeah. So a header off of number 14 for the Flying Fleet. That's Vivian Gonzalez. Golio doesn't even have to get a hand on it. It's going to go out of bounds. So it looks like we are going to see Rachel Curtis come off the field. They're probably going to check on her after that hit to the head. Number 16, another freshman on this team, Michaela Lotch, or excuse me, Latch, freshman from Anderson, South Carolina. Latch actually scored the first goal of the season for the Warriors. Erskine with another deep possession right there near the goal. Warriors able to knock it back out. Shot taken, long shot, but it is going to be wide to the right. I think that shot was by number three, Marissa Miltko. Golio sets up, kicks this one away. Latch is the first one to get a foot on it. Flying Fleet are there to take it away. <coughs> Erskine using both sides of the field. It's a really good strategy so far. You mentioned earlier that teams like Erskine will test both sides of the field to see which one the Warriors are more weak at. Uh, does that usually translate into much more possessions overbearing to one side of the field later on in the game, or does it have to switch up depending on the personnel that's in? How does that work? Usually they just try to hit both sides early on in the game and then kind of switch to go to one side. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into making one side of the field work better than the other. And over time, it just mostly can come from weakness of just the legs and just being tired because soccer is not an easy sport whatsoever. Uh, a lot of people think it is, but it's a lot of hours on the legs, hamstrings and quads. So after a while in our game, it can just be repetitive and repetitive. But SWU is really good at training the quads and the hamstrings. And they've gotten better over the years of working both sides of the field. So it's definitely not a weakness for them. I'm saying it's a growing strength, especially with this year. we got a lot of new faces and new freshmen coming in to help out with quickness. Some are quicker on their feet than others, but everyone plays their positions and really has strengths for the team. So that kind of goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, four straight overtime games at this yes. point. It's, it's brutal on the legs, just ice bath, rest, and these girls go to class, and then they come out here in the heat and practice for two hours a day and then get done. They have to get treatment. Our, our training staff is amazing. Shout out to Ryan Smalls, uh, SJ, and Alexis. They are it's a three-man team, and they really – work to help keep us as healthy as possible but out here with the heat and just how gruesome practice can be sometimes it's just can be a lot sometimes we go back and add up the extra minutes played the warriors have played four games but it's actually over four and a half when you count the excess minutes that overtime adds on 
Warriors, I know, have at least been in one double overtime, and that was against Lees McCray, and that came down to the last minute. Mm -hmm. Good deflection there by Golio. Shot taken, I believe that is number 16 or 18. Warriors are coming off of a week and a half break, so they've had time to recoup and get their legs back underneath them, and right now it, it's showing kind of. Yeah, that shot was by number 16. That's Maddie Cole, one of the newer subs that came in for the Flying Fleet. Chance for Erskine. Irby able to knock it out of bounds on the side to prevent a corner kick from coming. We'll see a throw in by the Flying Fleet coming up in just a second. Right now, Swoo's really good at stepping in and taking that contact, as we just saw from, was it Wolbert? That yeah, Wolbert. Wolbert just came in and took that hit. So Sue's really stepping in and making sure they're cutting off the runs in, pushing them to the outside. There's been a lot of throw-ins this game. Thanks to that hustle by Wolbert, ball went out of bounds, last touch by the fleet. Now the Warriors were able to flip the field. Erskine all the way back on their side now, opens it up, gives the Warriors a little better of a chance to play defense. Butler coming in, taking that one away. Flying Fleet pushes it in. Bad pass. In comes number 28, though. That's Eliza Denmead. Cole here on the near side, shooting in. Header, good deflection by Schweiger, though. But that one's going to roll in for a goal. Erskine on top of the Warriors now, two to nothing. That one was by number 14, Vivian Gonzalez. I believe that's her second shot of the game, first goal of this game. So now with just under 20 minutes left to go on the clock, Warriors trailing this one two to nothing. Romanowski kicks it over to Green, back to Irby on the back line. We saw the Warriors with two shots on goal very early on, aggressive play, and now it just seems like Erskine's adopted that motto, and they've come in and they've had just shot after shot after shot, it seems, here lately, and the last couple have went in for goals. We see Golio coming all the way out of the 18 box to clear that one out. Sometimes when that space is given, the goalie just comes on out and clears it. Be able to slow down the play. Slow it down and push the, the flying reset. fleet. Push the flying fleet back. Now a foul called. We'll see Irby kick this one away. Back-to-back -back kicks by Owens trying to clear it out. Fleet have it on the far side trying to attack in. Both teams are being really good right now talking. And that's, that's what's going to set this game apart. Another shot there, but that's going to be wide to the left. Looks like number 28, Eliza Denmead, trying to get in on the action. Erskine seems to be liking that left side of that goal today. <laughs> I remember Erskine's first shot came from the middle of the field. The next two came from the right side. Neither one of them went in, but they seem to move over to that left side, and that has been the sweet spot over the last few minutes for them. They've been able to get great possessions and 
relatively good shots on goals and two goals in that span. Latch has it, trying to pass it up to Romanowski. Fleet were able to get a foot on it. Latch still fighting for it. Schweiger able to make contact up at midfield. Back on that left side again for the Fleet. And when Coyer stepping in and taking that hit. Wolbert with some really good defense there. Pushed Erskine back up top. Attempted a shot there, but it's going to roll out of bounds. <coughs> Looks like number nine, I believe, Robin Martin. Wasn't able to get anything underneath that shot, and it just rolled straight out of bounds. We're going to see number seven, Hayden Banks, coming in for Vivian Gonzalez. Pass into the middle. Courier watches it goes by. Golio just let it go out of bounds. It's a nice human day outside, but on the field, it just feels about five to eight degrees hotter than actually real temp with all the sweat and the socks coming all the way up. It just gets really hot. And the field is one of the last places down here in this little area that Child's Field is that will actually be covered up by shade by the time the sun goes down. We're fortunate enough now with the sun setting behind us that we're covered by the trees, but... That shadow hits right to the sideline, and the whole field is still pretty much covered in sunlight. Right now, one of the challenges Golio is facing is the sun being down there at that goal. Dooley coming all the way up, trying to clear it back out. Foul called. Looks like that'll go against the Flying Fleet. Owens is going to kick it away. Butler to Baldwin looking for a pass right down the middle to Romanowski, but double teamed by the fleet. Kicked out of bounds by Latch. Warriors have sophomore Lisi Chastain ready to sub in. We'll see who she subs in for next stoppage of play. Looks like number nine, Charlie Brown, will be coming in and joining the game along with Lisi Chastain. Charlie Brown, a red shirt junior from the Cayman Islands. Attack up the middle by the Flying Fleet. Good save by Golio there. I believe that shot came from number seven, Hayden Banks, who we just saw sub in using her fresh legs to Try and up the lead for the Flying Fleet. <laughs> Another chance for the Fleet here. That shot's not even going to be close. Just unable to even get her hips turned in to even face the goal. Her legs were wide open when that ball hit and sailed towards the parking lot. See Charlie Brown coming in for Chelsea Green. Lisey Chastain came on the field. I didn't see who came off. Fun fact about Charlie Brown and Chelsea Green, they are both from the Cayman Islands. 
And you would think living on an island, they would see each other a lot. But actually, when they're at home, they never see each other. Sometimes if you're far enough apart, even those small <laughs> islands can seem pretty big. <laughs> and I just got word that Sarah Baldwin was the sub that came out when Lisey Chastain came in. Shot there, scooped up by Dooley. I believe that was Romanowski on the left side taking that shot. Give a little shout out to the SWU women's volleyball team. They're all out in the stands with some posters coming out to show their support. Volleyball team put on a show this past Friday in Tysinger where uh, they got swept 3 0 against Flagler, but first two matches weren't even close. But that third set, the final was 29 to 27. That one came down to the wire. That was a fun game to watch and call. Tysinger gets very energetic when the volleyball team plays, so it's a really fun atmosphere to be in. Shout out to the baseball boys for leading the cheers in that close game. Long pass by Courier, deflected back by the Flying Fleet. We'd like to let everyone know of a schedule change that is happening <coughs> for the ladies' soccer team. Scheduled to play Tacoa Falls on Tuesday, September 25th. That is next Tuesday. Uh, but because of all the delays and makeups, that game is actually going to be moved to Wednesday to give them an extra break. Otherwise, Warriors would have to travel from Murfreesboro, North Carolina on Saturday where they face Chawan to Wilson, North Carolina on Monday where they will face Barton and then having to turn around the next day and play here at Central South Carolina. So that game is the one to give them an extra day is being moved to Wednesday. It's a lot of travel time and sitting. The girls will be gone. That Chawan trip is, what, eight hours? And then they turn and come back to Barton. And I think that Barton trip all the way back here is like six. It's a long way. So they'll get back around two, maybe three Monday morning. Or, excuse me, Tuesday morning. So it works out that the game got moved to Wednesday, give them that extra day of rest. So the next two contests that the women's soccer team will be away, Murfreesboro for Chawan and Wilson, North Carolina for Barton. But we will have that Wednesday game on the 26th against Tacoa Falls. That will be at 6 p.m. here on the SWU Sports Network. We were originally going to bring you our men's team against Anderson University. But that game with both teams trying to make up some events that were canceled and had to be rescheduled due to Hurricane Florence, that game has been canceled, so instead we will bring you some women's soccer that night. Looks to be another Erskine throw in. Just under eight minutes left to go here in the first half. Olio picks that one up. <laughs> Wolbert coming in, trying to make a run happen here. Passes it out to Romanowski on the far side. Roman Little. looks to cut it in and successful in that one. Puts it in, but Dooley is there, pulls it out of the sky. Long shot by Romanowski, will not be able to convert. 
Warriors just haven't had those solid close possessions like they had when they started the game with two very close, very good shots on goal. Neither one of those went in, but they were probably the two best possessions the Warriors have had so far today. Throw in by Butler. Kicked out of bounds by the Flying Fleet. That one almost making contact with the press box up here. Couple of headers going back and forth between the Warriors and Flying Fleet. And here comes Erskine, right back down the middle on the Warriors side of the field. Pass over to number 19. She's not going to be able to get the pass. Good defense by Charlie Brown. Charlie looks to be a little slow to get up. That hustle all the way back from past midfield. Looks like she got clipped on the way, trying to hurdle Erskine as she slid in to make that cross. So we are going to see the clock stop. We'll see if our athletic trainers will head out there. Brown is up, limping a little bit. So a chance here for everybody to come to the sidelines, get some water. Looks like Charlie Brown will stay in. Just over six minutes left to go here in the first half. Kicked away by Owens. Brown's the first one to make contact with it. They're actually going to say that was out of bounds on the flying fleet, so Warriors will have possession. Just wanted to remind everybody that after the conclusion of this contest, we will be bringing you our men's soccer team also taking on the flying fleet. Throw in by the fleet. Ball gets away from one of the ball girls. Have to knock it back out of bounds. Schweiger pops this one up. Fleet come down with it. Wolbert playing tight defense. Pass towards the inside. Irby able to get the header on it. That's not a good sure. step by Helen there. Not sure if that was a shot or a pass, but Schweiger able to come in there and deflect it. Kick towards the inside. Irby is there. Shot taken right to Golio. Going to throw this one out to Chastain. Chastain trying to pass it to Latch. Header by number 12, Jillian Coves. Warriors able to get it back. Chastain passed down to Latch. That's going to be an offsides call.
for those who don't know what an offsides call is, um, the back line for any team is kind of the line, the last line of defense. And if a forward is kind of up behind them before the ball is passed, that'll be an offsides call because they're not in the line. But if they are lined up with the defenders, then they are on sides. Throwing a little soccer IQ out there for you. It's always nice to get the inside scoop as somebody who's never played soccer themselves. The best I've ever been is a fan and a broadcaster. <laughs> and really, I didn't become a fan of soccer until I actually started uh, working Warrior soccer games. So I've, I've learned a lot in these past few years, really grown to appreciate the sport and the toughness of it and the physicality of it. I always wondered why soccer had more injuries overall than football did. But after watching games like this, especially the women's game where I, you feel like they don't fake as much injuries as the men do. And uh, it's when, they, when there is contact, there is contact. And uh, so I've really, really grown to respect the physicality and the toughness of this and really see the conditioning the head coach Corey Morrell has been able to put into this team to be able to take those hits, whether they're on purpose or accidental, uh, being able to play them off, and just to be able to fight for 90 minutes and, heck, here in the first little bit of the season, 90 minutes plus with multiple overtimes. Coach Corey is really good about not just focusing on one position. He focuses on all of the positions, so whether it be the forwards coming in, and charging the goalie or even just now we just saw where Ashley Romanowski and Sarah Dooley there for a second kind of had a little collision for the fight over the ball. Even the midfield, they take some hits on when they're jumping up for headers and then even the back line. So it was really good about taking that contact and just keep on going. One minute left to play. <coughs> so the final 60 seconds here in the first half. Warriors trailing the flying fleet two to nothing. 45 seconds to go. Romanowski trying to get a possession there. Goes out of bounds. Warriors a ball. We're going to see a corner kick. 35 seconds left. You hear head coach Corey Morrell telling Romanowski to take her time, let everybody get set up. This probably be the final possession of the game. Good header there by the Flying Fleet. Ball gets away. Courier is there. 20 seconds left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. And that will do it for the first half here at Childs Field in this conference Carolina's matchup between the Flying Flea and your Warriors. Not a good first half for Southern Wesleyan, trailing the Flying Flea two to nothing. AM, what's something the Warriors need to make an adjustment in at halftime to come out and be able to get back in this game? Um, I would say just stepping more to the ball and just rotating. Right now, they're looking a little loose out there. And by that, they're just not as sharp as on their step and Just, just got to get there and make that extra step. So I know Coach Morell is really going to go in there and just talk to them. And the team's going to talk about what they just got to do better. But they're going to come out and they're going to do better on the second half because Swoo is really good at coming back and coming back from that adversity. So you heard it right there. That's what the Warriors need to work on to get back into this contest. We are going to take a break. Halftime is 15 minutes here at Child's Field, and we will see you to start the second half in just a moment.
-hmm. Second half action underway here at Childs Field. Flying Fleet coming out strong with an early possession deep in Warrior territory. Flying Fleet on top of this contest, two to nothing as we begin the second half. Rachel Curtis with a good up line pass there, but Erskine's able to knock it out for a throw in. Namus throws it into Curtis. Pretty much double team trying to wiggle inside. Contact there. No foul called. Ball's kicked back out to midfield. Flying fleet. Trying to storm inside. Pass on the far side. <coughs> Slow roller. Schweiger was there. Couldn't get her foot on it first. Popped inside. This is what the flying fleet liked to do. Header that was not <coughs> even close. That was probably intended more of a pass than a shot, but Golio comes in, scoops it up. So a bad first start for the Warriors. Erskine able to get close twice. Curtis going to be the first one sides. to touch it. Oh, late contact. Mm. Late contact by the fleet. Curtis stopped after the whistle blew, but number three for the Flying Fleet, Marissa Miltko, came in and lowered the shoulder. Clock stops. She keeps turning off. Curtis, she keeps turning off. Ref seems to be talking to both Sue and Erskine. Ball kicks. Name is trying to go for the header. Owens is there. Correction, Emily Corrier. Thank you. I did not see that at all. Owens is actually in the middle of the field. Corrier is here on the near side. It's kind of a smart play there by Corrier, able to kick it up and bounce it off Erskine player to make them knock it out of bounds so we can get another throw in. Ball is taken away by number 14, Vivian Gonzalez. Shot taken. That's going to bounce off the top of the goal post and go out of bounds. So Gonzalez's shot is high. She scored one of the two goals today for the Flying Fleet. Gonzalez unable to get it. They're going to actually call a foul on that one. Namist holding on to her face there. Hopefully she's okay. Looks to maybe be her finger. Maybe a jam. Golio chooses three to put in her wall. Looks like Namist is going to come off the field. <coughs> so number 33, Wolbert, is going to come in. So a free kick here by the Flying Fleet. We'll see if it's going to be number three or number 12. Baldwin, Corrier, and Owens there at that main wall. Three's going to take the shot. Goes up, out of bounds, wide to the right. Break there for the Warriors. No one was even able to get close. Er 
Kirby able to knock it out to Wolbert and actually going to go over Wolbert's head out of bounds on the Erskine side of the field. That will open up the defense a little bit. <laughs> Throw in by number three, Marissa Miltko. Warrior on defense, able to get the ball, hits it over to Schweiger. Looks like the foul will be against Vivian Gonzalez for the fleet. We'll see Irby set up for the kick. Erskine with possession again, already heading back towards the Warriors' goal. Gonzalez trying to stop that ball from going out of bounds. She will, but it will go out behind the goal. Shot taken there, but it's just going to roll up. Looks to be an offsides call on Erskine. <coughs> Even better when the shot doesn't count. Six minutes have come and gone here in the second half. Warriors are still trailing Erskine two to nothing. Erskine want to put some pressure on the ball right there. Forcing Ashton Irby to kick it out of bounds for an Erskine throw in. <laughs> Looks to be a run down here between number 10, Mio Owen, and Erskine. Another shot taken right to Golio. So another save by her. Romanowski double team. She's going to go down. Erskine's coach not liking that call whatsoever. Having a little discussion there with the ref. The official even yelling back to her, saying that they smushed her. They can't do that. From but here, from the press box, it did look like she kind of got sandwiched. Irby's going to kick this one right down the middle. Erskine called for an elbow. Look like number 18. It'll be Jane Ashley Meredith for the Flying Fleet. This will be a good opportunity for the Warriors here. We'll see Kissel and Schweiger line up. Predominantly, Kissel takes the shots right around here, but we'll see if Schweiger will do the duties this time. Both coaches being very vocal right now. Kissel's going to bypass the ball. Schweiger Ooh. takes the shot. It is going to sail. Only thing that's going to hit is a red car in the parking lot. Luckily, my car's behind the net, so it was safe. This is a new 
idea right there from Swu. Haven't really seen that one. A little fake. And then another kicker taking the shot. So a little strategy there from Coach Corey Morrell. Clock stops here. Head Coach Morrell talking to one of the officials. Not sure what the discussion is about. Dooley kicks this one out. She's able to put a lot of leg into that one. Gets past midfield. Good way to start for the Flying Fleet. Owens and Kissel on the defensive. Foul called against the Fleet. Warriors will have possession. to be number 18, Mallory Butler, taking that throw in for Swu. Swu choosing to play that left side of the field. Could Looked to be a great opportunity to switch it, but Mio Owens decided to maybe shoot it up line. Erskine decided to take that opportunity to step in. Golio comes up limping after that. Hopefully she'll be all right. Whistle blows. It looks like we might see a card, and we do. First card of the match. Yellow card against number 20 for the Flying Fleet. That's Alston Kuhlman. Official has been talking to both sides here and there. We might see a few of those. Golio is still down on a knee. Corey and Wolbert trying to play defense here. Able to take the ball away from the fleet. Pass inside deflected by Erskine. Hmm? Irby steps in, trying to make sure the fleet don't have another possession. Foul called against the Flying Fleet. So we'll see Owens come in and kick this one. Couple of substitutions on the sideline for the Warrior, Charlie Brown and Lisey Chastain. Ball goes out of bounds. We will see. We'll see the subs come in. Lisey Chastain coming in for Wolbert. And Charlie Brown coming in for Sarah Baldwin. Kissel pops this one up and out of bounds right to the Erskine bench. Contact there between Schweiger and the Flying Fleet. No foul called. Romanowski chasing it down. No Sarah Dooley backing in and coming out. Erson's coach not happy about that call. Looks to be a penalty. 
Sarah Dula will be standing in the net prepping for what can be a very nerve wracking position. Not exactly sure what the call was on. Saw it as Romanowski was going down. I'm sure it's contact Helen Schweiger. Clock stops. So it looks like the official will come and explain it to head coach Robin Smith. Both teams will take this time right here to just talk to each other. See a lot of communication coming out of Sarah Dooley. And uh, it looks like Rachel Curtis coming in and stepping in and talking to the girls. This could be a really nerve-wracking moment because as soon as Helen makes contact with the ball, everyone's rushing to get that rebound. So we'll see if Schweiger is able to cut the Warriors' deficit in half here. She can make this a two-to-one game if she's able to convert. Schweiger kicks, and that's going to get in there. That'll be the Warriors' first goal of the game. So now it is a brand new game. Warriors have cut that Erskine lead in half. So now knowing that one more shot could tie this up. One thing I saw from the Warriors last two games ago against Georgia Southwestern was that right after they would score, they allowed the opponents, the Canes, to come right back and score behind them. Would love to see the Warriors defense step up, be able to hold on to this momentum right now and be able to come back and at least tie this game up. You hate to see another overtime, but at this point, Warriors would take it if that's what it meant to be able to fight for the lead. Right now, just coming out of halftime, you just got to play like a 0-0. Zero, zero. And the Warriors are showing, they have that mentality right now. Even with the score right under their belt, they still got to keep playing as a 0-0. Zero, zero. Can't let up. Just over 30 minutes left to go in the second half. Schweiger getting her first goal of the season. So now five Warriors have scored goals this season. Romanowski with three, Curtis with two, Namus with two, Latch with one, and now Schweiger with one. Throw in for the fleet. Neil Owens able to step in right there and get that header out of the box. Fly ball up in the air. Golio's going to come in. Made contact with Irby there. She seems to be all right. Freshman Michaela Latch ready to sub in. Next stoppage of play. I have to imagine she would either come in for Curtis or Romanowski. Romanowski able to step in on that Erskine pass, get a little deflection but Erskine is able to come back with possession. Oh 
Looks like Romanowski will be coming out as Latch set to go in. Erskine seems to be doing the strategy of a double team this half, especially up there with Curtis and Romanowski. So Romanowski's coming off of a lot of good games, getting a lot of scoring opportunities, even put some in the back of the net. So she is one of the critical players for the Sioux Warriors at this moment. Long pass right down the middle. Golio is going to come out, kick it back towards midfield. Warriors really struggling since the beginning of the game to put together a solid offensive possession. Another shot here by the fleet, right to Golio. Erskine's kind of had that all gas, no breaks mentality, not backing down, kind of keep forcing the SWU Warriors keep stepping up that backline defense. Long pass. We'll see if an offsides is called after that contact. I wouldn't think so. Little slide kick there by Curtis. Dooley is going to scoop it up. Saw a little front smother there from Dooley. It's kind of good strategy sometimes whenever you just make sure you secure the ball and you go down. And also gives the team extra time to take a breath and get reset. <coughs> Golio coming out. See, she, she, oh, she decides to shield it and let it be a goal kick for Swoo. On those, she has the option of shielding it all the way out or sliding in and taking possession of it, and she chose to shield it out. So another save by Golio. Kicks this one out. <coughs> Curtis on the defensive. Good recovery there. Swoo able to kick it up line. Throw in by Courier. Just under 24 minutes left to go here in the second half. Yeah, 
Owen sending it all the way up past midfield and Charlie Brown in pursuit, putting pressure on Erskine there. Long shot there by the Flying Fleet. Golio able to dive forward, scoop that one up. Seemed to be a little confusion there between Coach Morrell and goalie, Jim Golio, on deciding how many to put in the wall. Looks to be they're sticking with one. Kick gets over the wall. Deflected by Golio. She just wasn't able to get enough of it as it bounces in. And so now the Flying Fleet will take a three to one lead. They're back up to a two-goal lead. Ashley Romanowski coming in. Rachel Curtis coming off. Charlie Brown coming in, taking the ball away. Forced out of bounds by the Flying Fleet. Long kick here by Ali Kissel. Dooley able to get underneath that one. Enough time to almost call a fair catch. Chastain trying to pass it into the middle. Latch and Namus were nowhere near that one. Dooley's able to bring it in. Latch coming in, trying to throw Dooley off her game. She'll just pick the ball up. Erskine skinning it all the way up. Comes down the back line of Swoo. And the Corey able to get it up and out to midfield. Sarah Dooley would come out on that one. Clearing it all the way out. In Swoo's territory, it'll be a Swoo throw in. Number seven, Emily Corrier looks to be taking it.
Joy Namus coming to the sideline, ready to sub in. and Irby able to step in and send it out. Slow and Erskine a little, but they seem to be unfazed by that one. Still with the all gas and no brakes mentality. Joy Namus coming in for Michaela Latch. Looks to be an Erskine free kick. See if they stick with the plan they've been going with all game, trying to get as close to the goal as they possibly can to try to set up another goal. main ref on the field had a better view of that one than the linesman and he chooses to call be a swoop goal kick instead of an Erskine corner. Irby will clear this one out right to midfield Brown with the header trying to knock it back into Erskine territory flying fleet were there long pass that one gets away from the fleet rolls out of bounds warrior ball Shot taken. Golio is just going to stand there and let it come to her. Erskine seems to be keeping it in swoo territory for the majority of the half. Goes back to what you said, that all gas, no breaks mentality. Another shot taken that's going to bounce off the side of the goal. Loosening it up, but it was just a little bit too hard on that pass. Charlie Brown not able to get to it. 
be sent out, being an Erskine throw in in Swoo's territory. Erskine's been good about using both half of the field this, this half. Swu seemed to adapt pretty well. Sticking with that hard defense and step in and taking that extra step. As we talked about before halftime, they came out. They've been able to do that. Thirteen minutes left in the second half. Right now, Erskine leads 3-1. Swoo's trying to take every opportunity to be as quick as possible and take every advantage as they can. Right now, Joy Namist sending it up to Ashley Romanowski. Coming Chance. in one-on-one. -on -one. Ooh, Sarah Duell is able to get a foot on it as a collapse dive and get it out for a Swoo corner. That was a good shot by Namist, but Dooley was just going to make sure that one did not get in. That was good positioning on Dooley's part, cutting down that angle. So now Romanowski with the corner. Schweiger trying to knock it back. Namus has it again. Back out to Chastain. Tries to get the shot deflected by the fleet. Erskine sending it all the way up to midfield. Sue booking it all the way back. Pass here to the near side. Number 18 for the fleet moves back to the middle, back to the near side. Irby is there. Courier loses her footing. Luckily, Owens was there to knock it back past the gold box. Good job by Schweiger just to come in and take it away. Clears it back all the way to midfield. Namus looking for Romanowski. Has to slow up, get a foot on it. No offsides called. Trying to drive it inside. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll still be Warrior Ball. Substitutions coming in. Chelsea Green coming in for a Allie Kissel. And Rachel Curtis coming in for Charlie Brown. Another Erskine throw in. This time from Erskine's side of the field. Erskine threw it a little bit over. Number 23, Emily Corey will step in. But Erskine still maintains possession. Switching sides of the field. Ten minutes left to go here in the second half. Warriors trying to come back in this one to get their second Conference Carolinas win of the season. Trying to push their record to three and two to stay above 500. Erskine coming in looking for their first conference win, trying to get their second win of the season. A little contact there from behind by Erskine, number 18. Rachel Curtis able to get the call. Curtis Set. has been hit hard several yeah. times today. Both her and number two, Ashley Romanowski, have been taking some hits. But it just goes back to that training from Coach Morrell and the physicality that they go through and the drills they go through in practice. So they're kind of used to it. Corner kick coming for the Warriors. Romanowski will head back to the near side corner. Bo 
both coaches still being very vocal, which is a really good sign. Romanowski's got it up. Namist is there. Tries to send it back in to the mayhem. Deflected by Erskine. It's going to roll out of bounds. Still be Warriors possession. Owens comes in. Quick throw in, trying to get it to Courier. Erskine takes possession, sends it all the way upfield. Erskine with another deep possession. Shot taken, but Golio is there. Erskine putting pressure on Golio to release that ball. She's able to roll it out. We really don't see much of that in games, of a throw out from a goalie or a roll. It's usually just punts. So it was a good strategy there to switch up, especially with that open space, lead the player out. That's something that we haven't seen, in the, especially in the men's game, for a long time. The women used to do it a little more frequently, but like you said, it's nice to see them switch it up just to try and find somebody who's not paying attention, expecting a punt like normal. But Romanowski on the far side near the corner, trying to get it back to the middle, looking for Curtis deflected. Schweiger with another shot, but that's going to be wide to the left. Seven minutes left to go here at Childs Field. Warriors trailing the Erskine Flying Fleet three to one. Pass down the near side. Number 23 is right near the corner. Courier on defense. Good Lisa deflection. Chastain stepping in, taking that block. Erskine sending it a little bit too far. And it'll roll out for a swoop goal kick. Something we've always also seen in this half is Golios choosing to let Ashton Irby number four take the goal kicks. It's another strategy that sometimes is used by Golios as well. That one was actually one of Irby's lower goal kicks. I've seen her be able to put some leg into it and really kick it a long way. Curtis trying to take a long shot here. Sarah Dooley. Not even <coughs> using her hands until Curtis actually put some pressure on her. I saw what Rachel was trying to do. Dooley was so far beyond the goal that just hoping to be able to, if you can make her miss there in the open space, it just rolls right in. But Warriors unsuccessful that time. And here comes the Flying Fleet. Golio coming up. Able to dive, which threw the Erskine player off guard. Able to pull the ball in. It was loose for a little bit. Everybody seems to be okay after the dive and tumble. Chastain passing it over to Curtis. Curtis looking for Romanowski. Pushes it on the outside near the box. Romanowski being double teamed right there. Ball goes out of bounds. We will see a corner kick for the Warriors. Got 430 remaining in the second half. So who's really going to look to capitalize on this corner kick right here? At this point, they have to start capitalizing. Running out of chances here with under five minutes left to go. Romanowski's kick is up. Curtis was going for that one, just misses it. We'll see if that one rolls all the way out of bounds, and it will. Erskine opted not to give chase on that one. Clock stops. Substitution coming in for the Flying Fleet.
Flying Fleet with another attack already. It seems that whenever the Fleet have the ball, they don't spend any time at midfield. Their entire possession is down near the Warrior goal. They have not let up this half whatsoever. Irby kicks this one. Curtis gets it on the head. <coughs> Kicked right back. So we saw that flying fleet player there from midfield kick it straight back to the goal. Is that just pretty much a method to eat clock at this point? Right now, Erskine's trying to get comfortable since they do have that 3-1 lead and trying not to give Swoo any opportunities whatsoever. But at the same time, her kicking it all the way there could have gave Erskine another opportunity to score. Namist trying to get it inside to Curtis. Goes out of bounds, but we will have a corner kick. Namus going to take it herself. Just under three minutes left to go here at Child's Field. Kicks, and that's going to hit the side of the goal. Warriors will lose that possession here. Clock stops as another substitution coming in for Erskine. Men's coaches for the Warrior team getting ready, bringing balls and equipment down to the sideline. Right now we have 2.37 left in the half. Flying Fleet, another possession inside. You can hear their coaches telling them to hold it at this point. Right now, Erson's coach is just trying to use a strategy of holding the ball and kind of eat as much clock time as they can, which means SWU, Coach Morrell, is really telling the girls to come on and step it and put more pressure on Erskine to make them pass the ball more and then Swoo just jump in that passing lane. Now under two minutes left to go here in the Warriors' second conference Carolinas matchup of the season. Warriors have a mountain to climb at this point. 145 left in the second half. There is time to score those two goals, but the only thing standing in Swoo's way is Erskine's mentality of all gas and no breaks. Ashley Romanowski right there. Got a little contact. Romanowski slow to get up on that play. Minute 20 left to go. Another shot taken by the fleet. No good. One minute left to play. <coughs> Final 60 seconds here. Can you hear Coach Morrell up in the press box? He's being very vocal, wanting the girls to kind of pick up the speed, go as quick as possible, but stay in control. And right now, they just got to do that. Thirty-five seconds left to go. Warriors looking to just get a spark at this point just to try and see if they can end the game on an exclamation point victory. A little bit out of hand here. Just trying to get something to end on a high note. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that will do it here for the women's soccer team in Child's Field. Their second conference Carolina's matchup of the year didn't go the way that they had planned or hoped, and that will dash the hopes of being able to tie the Limestone Saints and North Greenville Crusaders up in first place of conference Carolina's. Warriors will drop to one and one in conference Carolina's play. Erskine now jumps up to one and one in conference Carolina's play. They will hold the tiebreaker against the Warriors with the head-to-head -head victory. 
Warriors fall to two and three on the year, dropping below 500. The Flying Fleet jump to two and three. So make sure you don't go anywhere, folks. We are going to take about a half an hour break here on the SWOO Sports Network. But we've got some more Conference Carolina's action coming your way tonight. Our men's team will be taking on Erskine as well, trying to get all of this underway. That game is scheduled to start at approximately 7.30. AM, thanks again for joining me on the broadcast tonight. Loved having your insights as a former goalie here for our SWU women's soccer team. Love being able to hear the ins and outs that a lot of fans at home don't normally get to experience. I love being on it, and I'm glad to have a chance, and I cannot wait for next game because I will be back. Awesome. 